10 billion years from now, the corpse of the sun will be a white dwarf star, an incredibly dense sphere of carbon slowly cooling after the violence of its death throes. As I told you back in episode five, the burned out remnant of our once great sun will be roughly the size of the earth and will retain about half the sun's original mass. It'll be so dense that a teaspoon of this material will weigh several tons. But like any ancient corpse, nothing remains of the vital processes that fueled its exuberant youth. The nuclear reactions that supported it against its own furious gravity ceased eons ago. But that leaves us with a question. What fights that gravity now? After all, the gravity is still there, relentlessly trying to pull that white dwarf in on itself. Back when it was a true star, it was the heat of the nuclear reactions that resisted that pull. But what's resisting it now? Something must be, otherwise it would collapse. You might be thinking that the answer is obvious. It's made of carbon. Carbon is solid. It's the solid carbon that's resisting all that gravity. But if that's what you were thinking, you're wrong. Solidity is merely a manifestation of the electromagnetic force. For example, it is the repulsion of the electrons in the outer shells of the atoms of these balls that makes them feel solid. Okay, then, you say. It's the repulsion of the electrons in the outer shells of the carbon atoms that resists the gravitational onslaught. But no. You see, the carbon atoms in a white dwarf star have no electrons of their own. The temperatures at the time that the white dwarf star formed were far too high to allow normal atoms to exist. Indeed, this is a characteristic that the white dwarf inherited from its parent star. The temperatures in the core are so high that the electrons and protons are moving too fast to stick together. The result is that the electrons form a kind of electronic fluid that flows between the nuclei of the atoms in the core of the star and between the nuclei of the carbon atoms in the white dwarf. These electrons form a single system, and within a single system, they must obey a rule called the Pauli Exclusion Principle. In 1925, Wolfgang Pauli, in an attempt to explain why the electrons within atoms organize themselves into shells, coined this now famous exclusion principle, which says that two electrons in the same system must not be in the same state. The state of an electron can only differ in two ways, spin and energy. There are only two spins, left and right. But there are many different possible energies. Since the electronic fluid in a white dwarf star can have up to 10 to the 57th electrons within it, the electrons will arrange themselves into 10 to the 57th different energy levels. 10 to the 57th? That's a big number. Some of those electrons must have very high energies. The higher the energy of an electron, the faster that electron moves. Since there are so many electrons in a white dwarf star, some of those electrons must be moving very fast indeed. And that velocity creates a pressure, and that pressure resists gravity. Isn't that weird? I mean, it's not the heat that resists the crush of gravity. It's the requirement that all the electrons have to be in a different energy state. Cool. The pressure of electrons trapped in different energy states by the Pauli exclusion principle is known as the pressure of degeneracy. Indeed, the matter within a white dwarf star is said to be in a degenerate state.